Hey guys, today we're going to move on and talk about Unit 5, Lesson 28. Now we're going to take the statistical information that we have and we're going to put them into displays. So there's three different ones we're going to talk about. Dot plots, which are also called, called line plots, histograms, and box plots. So, a random sample of teenagers ages 13 and 14 were asked on average how many messages do you send per day? Here are the results. So we have all of our different numbers. Display the data in a dot plot. What can you say about the results? So we're going to use what we know to help solve this. We're going to draw a dot plot to represent the data. Instead of an X, draw a dot to represent each person's response. So we've seen the line plots on our quizzes and our work in the previous lesson. Now we're doing the same thing, only we're going to put a dot instead of an X. So, B says, how many teenagers were surveyed? How do you know? Well, if we look at our dot plot that we created, we can see that there are 15 dots. So there would be 15 because there are 15 dots for each response. Okay, C says describe the shape of the graph. So this is where we're going to use our vocab from last week, the cluster, the peaks, the outliers, um, all of that information. So if we were to look at this, do we have anywhere on our dot plot where we have a whole bunch together? Well, yeah, over on the left-hand side, we can say that there is a cluster from 10 to 20. We can also look and see that at 10, we have a peak. And at 90 and 100, we have outliers. So D says, count the number of dots at 0 and at 10. What do these numbers mean? So if we count the numbers at 0 and 10, we count that we have 5 people. And that means that five people send less than 20 texts per day. E, what is one conclusion you can draw from this dot plot? Well, if we look kind of at all of our data in general, we can say that most teens send less than 50 texts per day. So on the previous page, you displayed the data in a dot plot and analyzed the data. Dot plots are best for small data sets. So go ahead and underline that. A dot plot are best for small data sets. Each dot represents one piece of data in the data set. So if you had a whole bunch of data points, that would be a lot harder to put into a dot plot. Dot plots are one way to display and analyze data. Another way is to put dot plots, dot plots in to groups. Let's say you were interested in finding out how many teenagers send 50 or more texts per day. How many send fewer than 50 text messages per day? You count the number of dots in those categories and you make a table. So here we have our table. We have 0 to 49, which is the less than 50, and we see that we have 9, and then we have our 50 to 100, and we see that we have 6. So we can then take that data and display it in what we call a histogram. It looks very similar to a bar diagram, only our bars are side by side, and instead of having specific numbers across the bottom, it's ranges. 
So you can see, just like when we talked about up at the top, we have our 0 to 49 and our 50 to 100. So a histogram groups the data using intervals or bins on a number line. The height of each bar represents the number of data points in that group. So with a histogram, we can't see each individual point, but we can see ranges. All right, so let's reflect. Explain the difference between a dot plot and a histogram. Dot plots show individual data points. Histograms group data points together. So, Caroline looked at the text messaging data and drew the histogram to the right. She noticed that this histogram does not show how most of the data points are clustered around 10 and 20 text messages per day. Draw a histogram to show the data grouped in a different way. So, basically we're going to take the same information, only we're going to try to make it so we can see each data point a little more clearly. Not individually, but a little more clearly. So in the model it, you can use more intervals to display the data in a table to help understand the problem. Now, one thing I want to point out, if you notice, their intervals are all the same. They are all ranging in groups of 20. You have to make sure that when you're setting up histograms that your, your intervals are the same amounts. You cannot have one be more than another. So, in the second model, you can display the data in a histogram to look at the data in another way. So now we have the same information, but since we broke it down into more intervals, we can see better now that most text messages were sent from 0 to 20. So let's look at the questions. Number two says, look at the diagram, or the histogram in the second model. It. What do the numbers on the vertical axis mean? So the vertical axis is the one on the left side. And it means the number of teens or the data points. How many? What do the numbers on the horizontal axis means? That's across the bottom. And then this is the data values. group together. So that's our ranges. Number three, what does the height of each bar represent? Well, the height of each bar is how many data points in that variable or that interval. Number four, what does it mean that there's no bar at interval 61 to 80? Well, if there's no interval there, that means that there is no data. For that interval. Number five, compare the two histograms on the previous page. Which histogram better represents the spread of data and then explain? Well, if we're wanting to look at the spread of data and how many for each area, the second one is better because the intervals are smaller. So you can more accurately see the data points.
Number six, how does changing the interval or bin size change the way a histogram looks? Increasing the interval divides the data into more groups. And you can see more details. On the first one with two intervals, we saw that there were several in each category or each interval, but once we lower or increase the amount of intervals, we could see more specifically where most of those texts were at. All right, so now I want you to try it. Use what we just talked about up above, and I want you to do number seven. You are going to draw a histogram to represent the data which is shown below. So remember, you're ranging from zero to 12, so make your intervals even between those so that you can see your data correctly. Take a moment, pause the video, and do that. All right, so let's look at this. First of all, we'll draw our basic graph line here. So over here on the left-hand side, on the vertical side, we have the number of sixth graders And obviously we have from 0 to 12, so we'll, I'm going to count by twos. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. And then across the bottom we're going to do our intervals. Since I have from 0 to 12, I think I'm going to make mine go up from 0 to 2, 3 to 5, 6 to 8, 9 to 11 and 12 to 14. That keeps them even as they go across. You could have done them differently and that's fine as long as you have the same amount for each interval. So then as I go through I can see from 0 to 2 that I have four data points. So I draw my graph or my bar. And then for 3 to 5 I have 5 so just slightly higher. And from six to eight, I have eight. So I go up to here. Remember, make sure you keep them touching. And then for nine to 11, I have two. And then from 12 to 14, I have one. So your graph would look something like this. Now, if your intervals are different, yours will look different too. You just count them up and it should be based off that. Okay, now we're gonna talk about box plots. Michelle looked at the text messaging data and wants to describe the spread of numbers above and below the median. Remember, the median's our middle number. So here's our data points again. We're going to describe the spread of data above and below the median. So, in our model, it, we can, it shows how we can use a box plot to help us solve this problem. You can find the median, so find your middle number, and then you find your upper and lower quartile. So, your lower quartile is the middle number of all values less than the median. So, you're finding the middle of the bottom half. And then your upper quartile is the middle of all the numbers greater than the median. Okay, so if we look, here's all of our numbers listed out in order from least to greatest. So when we find our middle number, we would see that we have 20 as our middle number. So median, I'm going to do purple, and it's 20. Then we have to find our upper and lower quartile. So I'm going to take all the numbers above 
my median. Do not include the median. But all the numbers above the median, and I'm going to find the middle of it. When I find the middle of it, I see that my upper quartile is 50. Then I'm going to do the same thing to find my lower quartile. I take all the numbers below the median, and I find my middle number, and I see that it's 10. So then I basically just draw a line, number line, and I plot my points above it. So you can see my lower quartile I have here above 10. I have my upper quartile here above 50. And then I have my median in the middle at 20. And then to finish out my box plot, I find my minimum value and my maximum value. My minimum value is my lowest number. My maximum value is my highest number. Another number, the interquartile range, or what we call the IQR, is the difference between our upper quartile and our lower quartile. It measures the spread of the middle, it measures the spread of the middle 50% of the data. So our interquartile range is the difference between the upper and lower quartiles. Okay? And that's what you can see right there. So let's go ahead and answer a few questions about this. What is the median of this data set? So what is our middle number? Well, we know that it is 20. And then what does this number mean? It's the middle number in the data set, which means that there's 50% above and below that number. Number nine, is there a wider spread above or below the median? And then explain. Well, basically we're trying to find the difference between our median and our highest number and our median and our lowest number. So if we did that, we would see that there's more data above the median because the median is 20 and the highest data point extends to 100. Number 10, explain what the length of the rectangular box represents. Well, the rectangular box is the middle 50% of the data. Or we could also say that it's the IQR, because the IQR represents the middle 50% of the data. Number 11, explain what the lines extending from the ends of the box represent. Well, the lines are, if the box is the middle 50%, the lines are the bottom and top. 25% of the data. 12, what is the IQR of this data set? Is it affected by the outlier? Well, to find our IQR, we take our third quartile, which is 50, minus our first quartile, which is 10, and we get an IQR of 40. And then it says, is it affected by the outlier? Well, there are no outliers in the IQR. Remember, the IQR is the middle 50%. Outliers are going to be off on their own to one end or the other. So no, they don't affect it.
All right, so try what you just learned and see if you can create a box plot and find the IQR for this data below. Pause the video, try it, and then resume it to check your answers. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is draw a number line down here. And then I'm going to label it from 0 to 12 because that's where our numbers fall. Oops, squeeze it in there. All right, so first thing that I have to do is find my middle number. Since we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 numbers, that means I'm going to have two in the middle. So I'm going to find my 10th and 11th number. So my 10th and 11th number are right here. So that means my middle number is going to be 6, and it falls in between those. So then I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to put a dot over 6 for my median. The next thing that I have to do is then find my upper and lower quartile. So I take everything below the median. Since my median is not one of my data points, I include the two 6s I use to help me find my median. So I'm going to find the middle number of all of these. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So once again, I have two middle numbers. It is 3 and 4. So I find the middle of those. So I would do 3 plus 4 is 7, and 7 divided by 2 gives me 3.5. So then I put a point above 3.5, which would be about there. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the upper quartile. So I take that 6 that I used to help me find my median, and I find the middle of all of these. Once again, there's 10, so I take my middle 2. So I have 7 and 8. So the middle of 7 and 8, I had 7 plus 8, that's 15. Divide by 2, that would give me 7.5. So I put a dot above 7.5. This now becomes my box. This is my middle 50%. Then the last thing I have to do is find my, up, my minimum and my maximum. And I put a dot to represent both of those. So my minimum is 0, my maximum is 12, and then I connect those. They call these whiskers. You might also hear a box plot called a box and whisker, and those are your whiskers. So, your box plot should look like this. Okay, so now we're displaying and analyzing the data. So the test scores of students in a math class are listed below. Construct a dot plot, histogram, and a box plot to display and analyze the data. So, you can see here in the model, it, we have our dot plot. We've taken our number line, and we've put our dots for each data point to show where they fall. Then for our histogram, we created our ranges, or our intervals. Remember, we have to make sure they're equal. And then we filled in the numbers for each score. For the box plot, we found our median, our lower quartile, our upper quartile, our minimum and our maximum, and we plotted them on the box plot. So, let's answer questions. Which graph is best for finding out the most common test score? Well, if we're wanting the most common test score, we need to see each score, so that would mean that the dot plot, because you can see each score. Number 15, how does drawing a dot plot help order the data values from least to greatest? Well, a dot plot is on a number line, so they are in order. Number 16, explain which graph is best if you want to know how many people scored a B on the test. 
and the student's math class, a B is a score from 80 to 89. Well, if we're putting it from 80 to 89, we're grouping them. So the histogram would be the best because it groups its data. Number 17, explain which graph is best for a teacher who wants to know the range of scores for the bottom 25, the middle 50%, and the top 25%. Well, the one that breaks it into the middle and then our top and bottom 25 is the box plot. It shows the middle 50% and top and bottom 25%. Number 18, why is it important to display data in different ways? So you can see the data in the way that shows the information you want. All right, so now use what you just learned. Go through, make a dot plot, a histogram, and a box plot for the data in this set. Once you're done, you can come check with me, and I will show you what they should look like.